Have you ever been on the edge of your seat, totally caught up in an exciting chase? If so, then The Fugitive might be right up your alley. This classic TV series from 1963 tells the story of a man who's wrongly accused of a crime he didn't commit. As he tries to find the real criminal, you'll go through a roller coaster of emotions from thrilling excitement to heartbreak. In this video, get ready to learn some interesting, surprising, and sad facts about this timeless show. But before we start, think about when you first heard about this series. What do you think makes it so special and unforgettable? Share your thoughts below. We want to hear all about your memories and experiences with this amazing show. So keep watching and don't forget to leave a comment with your stories. Let's uncover the mysteries and explore the world of The Fugitive together. You won't want to miss any of it. Back in the early 1960s, people all over America were hooked on a groundbreaking TV series that set the bar for suspenseful storytelling. This show stood out from the rest, The Fugitive. Picture this, you're on the edge of your seat, eyes glued to the screen as an intense story unfolds. It's about Dr. Richard Kimball, wrongly accused of his wife's murder. He's on a mission to prove his innocence while dodging Lieutenant Gerard, the determined lawman chasing him. What made The Fugitive special was its fresh way of telling stories. Every week, viewers got a new part of Kimball's journey full of surprises and suspense. It wasn't just about solving a mystery, it also explored themes like justice and the human spirit's strength in tough times. Set in the 1960s, The Fugitive captured the feelings of the era, reflecting the tensions and worries of the time. But it wasn't just culturally important, it also changed how TV shows were made, inspiring filmmakers and storytellers for years to come. As people tuned in week after week, The Fugitive became more than just a show. It became a big deal, leaving a lasting impression on TV history. Its influence spread far and wide, inspiring lots of other shows, movies, and tributes. So next time you're flipping channels or scrolling through streaming sites, give The Fugitive a try. It's not just a show. It's a storytelling lesson that still grabs people's attention today. In his first appearance on a Western TV show in 1963, he played a character who died, which was a hint of what would happen in his career. This connection was eerie when it happened again in a Western movie in 2015, 52 years later. Episode 11 of season 2 was notable not only for his acting, but also because Ron Howard was a guest star. Back then, they didn't know Howard would become a successful director, working with him and other talented actors later on. As time passed, he stayed important in the industry while others came and went. He had a special role as the last surviving original cast member of a beloved 1970s TV show. This inspires actors and viewers even now. His work in entertainment shows his talent and dedication, making a mark on TV history. All this shows how he left his mark on the silver screen. The Fugitive, a TV show from 1963, was super popular. One episode got a lot of viewers, almost as much as the Who Shot JR episode of Dallas. The main character, Dr. Kimball, played by David Jansen, was wrongly accused of a crime. He chased after a guy with one arm who he thought did it. Dr. Kimball was really smart and had a lot of medical training, including going to school at Cornell and doing internships in New York and Chicago. He also studied in London. The character's family history was interesting too, with connections to Armenian revolutionaries and actors. The Fugitive was a great show that people loved all over the world. In The Fugitive, the car driven by Richard Kimball in the first episode, and in flashbacks to the night of the murder, was a 1960 Mercury Park Lane. It was also shown in extended flashback scenes in one episode. One of the actresses in The Fugitive, who won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar, also earned an Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series Emmy. The other actresses who achieved this double honor are Cloris Leachman and Melissa Leo. Another actor in the series, who initially attended an audition to support a friend, ended up landing a role due to his sinister demeanor, leading to more opportunities in TV and movies. Barry Morse, who played a detective in the show, shared stories of older women coming up to him in stores, convinced that the one-armed man was really guilty. These encounters added a funny twist to Morse's experiences, showing how much the show stuck with people. Meanwhile, Mad Magazine made fun of it as The Fugitive, showing how popular and influential it was. In another movie, Bill Raish and George Kennedy were in Lonely Are the Brave, showing how talented the actors were. The Fugitive didn't just stay on TV, it left a big mark on culture. This famous TV series keeps on grabbing people's attention with its exciting story and memorable characters. 
The famous TV show, The Fugitive, aired in 1963. The lead actress got a nomination for Best Actress at the Tony Awards in 1976 for her great acting in They Knew What They Wanted. In the exciting opening credits, the train carrying Richard Kimball is French, which adds interest to the show. At first, he ran away from his home in Wisconsin, but then the story quickly moved to Indiana because Wisconsin didn't execute murderers. This change in location made his journey more complicated as he traveled through unfamiliar places while trying to avoid being caught. The Fugitive mixed suspense and drama really well, keeping viewers hooked and making it a classic TV show. The Fugitive, a TV show from 1963, is special because it was the first to have an actor win Emmy Awards in comedy, drama, and limited serious TV movie. David Jansen, who played the main character, Dr. Richard Kimball, achieved this. This is like how Cloris Leachman and Yuso Aduba also did it. One interesting story is when actor Barry Morse, who was in the show, got a note in a London restaurant saying, Kimball is in the kitchen. This shows how engaging the show was. Besides the acting, the show has a connection to a famous movie, The Maltese Falcon. In that movie, they made special falcon props. Some were small and made of plastic or lead. One of the lead falcons, given to Conrad by a studio chief, was sold for a lot of money. It was used to make a fancy gold replica worth millions. The value of these props matches the value of the falcon in the movie. The Fugitive had a lasting effect, not only because of the awards it won, but also because of its connections to famous movies. It's an important part of TV history. In the beginning of his career, the main actor of the 1963 TV series, The Fugitive mainly played tough criminals. However, in the 1970s, there was a big change when he starred as a detective in the Marcus Nelson Murders TV movie and its follow-up series, Kojak. He also took on the role of Santa Claus in several productions, dressing up as Santa at least eight times. His Santa appearances include Elf, The Ellen Show, Olive, The Other Reindeer, The Story of Santa Claus, A Story About Christmas, Santa Stole Our Dog, A Merry Dog on Christmas, and guest spots in episodes of Regular Show and Highway to Heaven. While the last episode of The Fugitive was airing, he was filming The Green Berets. When the second part of the finale aired, he shared insights on the series' end during an interview on Joey Bishop's ABC nighttime program conducted from Fort Benning, Georgia. His varied career, transitioning from playing criminals to a detective and even becoming Santa Claus, shows his versatility in the entertainment industry. The Fugitive, a TV series from the early 60s, saw the passing of Ed Asner in August 2021 at 91 years old. Gavin McLeod, his former co-star from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, passed away just three months earlier at 90, making him one of the last cast members to do so. In another role, she was one of the rare actors to have killed John Wayne on screen, which led to some receiving death threats. During a dinner with Betty Davis, she managed to quit smoking, but promptly started again afterward, 